In 1945, a 19-year-old Norma Jean Baker signed up with modeling agency Blue Book. The receptionist wrote down her measurements as 36, 24, 34, which at 5'5 five five and 118 pounds would be considered by today's BMI standards a completely healthy average size. But even then, the head of the company referred to her as too plump, but in a beautiful way. In this video, we take a look at Hollywood's most iconic woman's real dress size and the archive behind it. Stay tuned. Marilyn Monroe's size has always been a topic of discussion, not just after her death in 1962 but more so when she was alive. During her modeling days and later during her career on the big screen and at parties during Hollywood's golden age, from the 50s hourglass ideal that she embodied to her enduring sex symbol status, her actual dress size comes up time and time again. Marilyn Monroe was around the same size as the average American woman today, size 12 to 16. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth, at least today's sizing systems. How this myth got started isn't exactly known. One possible contributing factor to this myth was Marilyn Monroe's rare extreme hourglass shape. More directly, it probably partly stems from the fact that women's sizes today are not at all equivalent to women's sizes in the 1950s. In the 1980s, in order to accommodate people's vanity and ever-expanding girth, the U.S. Department of Commerce got rid of the uniform sizing system and instead allowed for more ego-stroking sizes. As a result of this, today a size 8 would have been roughly equivalent to a size 16 to 18 in the 1950s. Obviously, though, this varies a shocking amount from brand to brand. So what size was Marilyn Monroe really? Luckily, many of her dresses carefully preserved are still around to measure off of. Further, one of her dressmakers also chimed in with the exact measurements he took. These measurements were 5 foot or 5.5 inches tall, 35 inch bust, 22 inch waist, and 35 inch hips with a bra size of 36D. Her weight fluctuated a bit through her career, rising in times of depression and falling back to her normal thereafter. But a dressmaker listed her as 118 pounds and the Hollywood studios tended to list her between 115 and 120 pounds. As to what size Marilyn Monroe would be in women's sizes today, that's not an easy thing to answer due to the differing sizes from brand to brand country to country and the fact that her extreme hourglass shape would have made it difficult for her to find the perfect size while clothes shopping. Luckily for her, she could afford to have her clothing custom made, which she usually did. As a direct example of her size, the white dress she wore in the seven-year itch was later auctioned off and was put on a mannequin that was a size 2, but they were still unable to zip up the dress as the mannequin was too big. Many of her other dresses that exist from throughout her career match up to about the same, give or take an inch or two. That being said, Marilyn Monroe at times would have her dresses so tight that they have to be sewn into her, so something more comfortable in a size 4 American and something like an 8 in the UK is probably more accurate with many brands. If you're curious as to how that compares to modern contemporary fashion models, according to Blue Fire Model Registry, models are generally in the vicinity of a 34-inch bust, 24-inch waist, and 34-inch hips, which is very close to Monroe's measurements of 35, 20 to 35. They also list the average model today at 5 foot 8 inches to Monroe's 5 foot 5.5 inches. While Monroe's dresses have become some of the most revered fashion items in history, in truth, the actor was no clothes horse. Her image may have been carefully crafted and precisely exercised both by herself and the studios that directed her, but clothes were merely a vehicle for Marilyn. While she wore pieces by the American designers James Galanos and Seal Chapman and had a number of favorite looks by Lanvin, Monroe never cultivated a powerful relationship with a fashion designer in the way that Audrey Hepburn did with Hubert de Givenchy, which is perhaps indicative of her attitude to style in general, it was something to be used as a tool rather than passionately fetid. 
during her New York phase when she studied with actor studio director Lee Stasberg and married playwright Arthur Miller, she favored more sober ensembles, shirts and capri pants, black beatnik, sweaters and dresses, enveloping beige and cream fur coats. In her book, Marilyn in Manhattan, her year of joy, Elizabeth Winder details a makeover overseen by Amy Green, the wife of photographer Milton Green with whom the star stayed in Connecticut in 1954. According to Green, whenever she, Marilyn, needed something to go out, she'd go to her friend in the wardrobe department at 20th, she'd borrow something and then the next morning, she'd bring it back with a $50 bill slipped in. It's hard to believe Marilyn wore borrowed dresses, but that is what she did according to the people she lived with. In terms of her shoes, Monroe adored Salvatore Ferragamo, from whom she would order multiple pairs of the same 3-inch heel court shoe with a more comfortable half-wood, half-metal stiletto that Ferragamo had patented for her. Her devotion to the brand also a favorite of Audrey Hepburn proved so enduring that it staged a retrospective exhibition at its Florentine Gallery in 2013 to mark the 50th anniversary of her death. Included in the displays were a number of her pumps including a red Swarovski encrusted pair which sold for $48,300 at Christie's. Well, that's what we know about Marilyn Monroe's style. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching.